In this video, I'd like to talk a bit about the Vector Brush Tool. We can select our Vector Brush Tool by clicking the little brush over here in our Tools. And we can go over to Tool Properties, which, by the way, is context sensitive and depending on what tool you select will update. So if yours doesn't look like that, that's because you haven't selected your brush. So let's take a peek at our Tool Properties for our brush. I'm going to make this a little larger so we can really concentrate on really see it so by default harmony has a whole bunch of presets that are loaded up in here and they range from just flat and graphic vector shapes to also texture as well so we can just go to what's a good what's a good texture one that you can see so there's some texture inside of our brush as we draw as a handy shortcut, if you hold down O on your keyboard and just drag left and right, you can see the brush size increasing. So I'll make it bigger so you folks can see it. So let's talk about how we can build and configure our own brush. So we can do that by, a good way to start is by selecting any of the preset ones. And we can go to our little add brush over here. We can hit new brush. And it's going to give us a chance to name it. Well, why don't we call this hmm, Vector Texture Brush Fun. Okay. So there's our Vector Texture Brush Fun. And there he is. He's exactly like the one we just started from. So we want to change him a little bit. So we can do that by making sure that he is selected first. And if we go up to the top up here, you'll see a little triangle. Let's click that guy. And it opens up our vector brush properties box. We'll keep him hovered right around there. And we have a bevy of options here. Let's talk about the tip, our first option right here. The tip is going to tell us whether or not it's a textured vector brush or this drop down just a solid vector brush. So why don't we talk about textured because it's a little more fun. So as you can see, this is the tip of the brush. This is what Harmony is going to stamp along as we draw to create our line. And you can see there's a whole bunch of in here. If we drag this down, we'll see a whole bunch of different tips that we can add uh, to our brush to give it different effects. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We can control the maximum size by playing with this slider right here. You can see the preview updating at the top. And if I change my tip, you can see that our, our brush stroke is different. It will update as we select all of these presets that are in here. We can add tips of our own design by clicking this little plus guy right over here plus and I made one ahead of time I just called that texture vector brush tip it's a Photoshop document but I believe it also accepts what is our images a Photoshop a PNG a JPEG a BMP a bitmap a TIFF so it accepts a lot of different types of images double click that guy and he's very similar looking I just realized right now to some of the ones that are already included in Harmony but that's my custom texture brush tip and of course it's pressure sensitive so let's talk about our maximum size again this is the maximum size if I push down bear down really hard it's going to give us the maximum size in this case I have it set to 92 percent the minimum size of course is referring to the minimum size if I drag that down you'll see the tips starting to fade a little bit the lighter I go I'm drawing very lightly it's almost impossible to see as I'm drawing lighter, 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 and now I'm pushing harder, 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 it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is what's controlling our, our pressure sensitivity. Um, why don't we pick one that's a little easier to see, maybe on the preview down here. Something a little more square, yeah, like this guy right here. If we, and let's clear out some of this stuff. We can go down to the roundness and angle. So again, this is all stuff that you can just play with with your heart's content. The roundness and angle, if we change this, it's changing how, if you see the image over here, it, how squished it's kind of being, squished or scaled, if you will. And we can play with the rotation of the tip by playing with this tip, this slider. As you can see, it's taking the tip and rotating it around the center. The next one, let's talk about the hardness. So pay attention to this little icon right here. The more I 
put this slider up by default right now this one's at 20 if we bring it up you'll notice that the edges get harder and more distinct and now if, again if I go back up to the roundness and angle it might update a little easier you can see what it's doing it's squishing the tip putting 100 would be a one-to-one -one ratio and here's where we can take our tip and rotate it around get, to get different effects if you can see it updating up here in our window our preview window up there so random size oh sorry I skipped spacing spacing is referring to how many times harmony is going to stamp that image along as we draw it so right now the spacing is at seven percent that means we have a pretty con sort of consistent uh, stamping along our line here but if we play with our spacing pay attention to what happens up there the more I put that up the less distinct it becomes and if I really push it you can almost you can see I'm gonna push it to 75 percent you can see the stamping you can almost literally see the, the the tip itself just being stamped along the line so that may be what you're looking for it may not be so if we can put the spacing back down to what was it at seven something that looks good yeah that looks pretty good a seven or eight percent you know the tighter this is the more opaque our brush is going to be so if I put it to what zero or yeah you one know, percent it's going to give us that really heavy thick line so that's a, that's a fun option to play with dropping down random size is kind of what it sounds like the random harmony will come up with a random size it'll play with this value in here as you draw and again it's random so couldn't tell you what it's going to do it's random we can also have a random angle again random couldn't quite tell you what it's going to do it's going to be random so the random angle is what kind of gives us a little bit more of a fuzzier edge which is kind of fun to play with and random spacing it will randomly space our textured tip out to create different effects that's a nice effect I like that that's fun let's delete that so that's just the tip so let's move into the next our next tab oh before I do that one thing we should do is um so we just did a bunch of work on this brush right pretend like we just spent some time sketching with it going ah, tweaking some settings going ah, oh, finally yes this is the this is the brush I want right here so one thing we need to make sure we do is actually save our work you'll notice there's a little asterisk right here at the behind at the end of our uh, the name of our brush that means we've done work we've changed a setting and we haven't like saved it yet so there's one of two things we can do before we move forward with the rest of the tutorial uh, to save our brush we can either push this little plus which is going to make a brand it'll like duplicate it it'll make another brush thereby um, keeping our old brush we can make a second one we can call it a version 2 if you want or update it for a different purpose then the button next to it update brush preset that will do what it sounds like it's going to update the preset I'm gonna hit that one there so now you can see our our vector and even our icon over here changed updated so that's something to keep in mind every time you're tweaking your brush settings make sure you're either updating your brush or if like you want to fall back you can make a version two that way you have two of them you can go back and forth and compare the two to each other very important to do okay back to the tutorial smoothing so our center line smoothing so harmony is drawing a little imaginary not imaginary it's very real uh, an invisible center line going right through the middle of our vector brush and so that's going to determine how smooth our line is right now it's sent to zero and the more I goose that as you can see that same value is, is available to us over here in the vector brush tool properties so we can play with that as we draw as we need to and that's just going to as you can see the more I smooth the more excuse me the higher this value is the more harmony is trying to smooth the line so I'm gonna bump it up really crazy so you guys can see it uh, I'm gonna do something really squiggly so when I let go of this blip, you can see it kind of like did its best to interpret my brush stroke and to smooth it out the best that the software could do and that's a matter of preference I'm gonna put mine back down to zero I like when it hugs my brush
So let's talk about oh transparency. Let's talk about the transparency as well. Uh, we can play with our opacity. So again, this is kind of pressure sensitive. So right now, 100% is 100% uh, op uh, opacity. But if we were to take this value and pull it down, let's just say 50%. So now it's 50% opacity. If I begin to overlap, you can see right there in that middle where it overlapped, we can kind of build up a value if we wish to work that way. The minimum opacity is referring to the pressure sensitivity. We can bump that up as well. So if I'm drawing really lightly, light, 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 it's going to be hard to see. But if I have it at 100%, no matter how light I draw, it's always going to be at a, the opacity will always be 100%. I'm going to put that back down to zero. I'm going to put this back up to 100 again, getting 100%. Our next tab is called the dual tip. So right now by default it's not checked off. If we check it, what Harmony does now is it's taking a second tip and applying another two tips at the same time to create yet more variety to our brushes. So this this information and this tab are essentially the exact same all the exact same values, but it's giving you the addition of a second tip. So that can give you even more variety to your brushes. I'm going to turn that off for now. Let's talk about our last tab over here, our paper texture. So we can have a paper texture that's behind that is being applied to our brush strokes as we draw. Harmony already has a few default ones. These are all very well thought out. The concept being the darker the texture is, that's where the majority of your value will be. If it's a white value, you'll have no color coming through there. So if I was to change the paper texture to something a little more like that, there's more white, you can see more white in there, you will not get as much of your color coming through. That will be red, that will be seen as an, op an alpha, you will be able to see through it. But the darker the paper texture, you will not be able to see through it. You will get full value of your color. So let's set that back to, I believe it was at texture seven. Uh, maybe it was two, it may have been texture two. And very similar to the tip, we can add our own paper texture by clicking this little plus right here. And you can import the same thing, uh, Photoshop documents, a PNG, a JPEG, uh, a bitmap, a TIFF, and you can import them in there. And you could really go to town creating almost any kind of paper texture uh, to to your brushes to create uh, your own look, your own unique look. Uh, so let's let's take a peek here. I'm going to I'm going to pull back on the size of this a little bit. I want to make this a little smaller. Let's do a little quick sketch here. How does that feel? I can go maybe a little bigger. See now I'm just playing around with it. That feels a little too big. Let's pull it down to like a 20, 30, 30. And I want my minimum size to be a little thinner. That feels pretty good. And I'm going to what? Look, there's my little asterisk. That means I did a bunch of work to my brush. I need to update my brush. Click the green arrow, updating my brush. So let's do a quick little sketch here. So we will. Do a little sketch of a character here. Center line for her eyes. Here's the center, or the eye line. Here's the center line for her face. And again, the harder I press on this, the more, the more value I get. And again, I find that the more I use, you have to actually kind of use a brush in order to get a feel for it. Um, so often what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a brush and then as I sit here and sketch, I'm like, no, I don't really like that effect. So I'll run back into my brush. Often as I'm working, I'll keep this open and I'll continually sit here and tweak settings as I, as I work. Um, she has very thin legs, almost tube-like. 
just the center line for her raincoat. And like maybe I have too much texture going on for, for this type of tool. So again, building a brush, uh, just to re reiterate, uh, it's a bit of a process. You know, you, you have to work with it in order, you know, you can sit there and just draw a little scribbly lines and go, oh, that looks beautiful. Um, but it's not really until you start using the brush that you see how it behaves, how it, per how it performs. You may not like it as chunky as you work. Like, for example, this brush might be a little too chunky for me as I'm sitting here working with it. I would refine it a little bit more to my, to my tastes. So here's a little sketch of a character. Our, our girl jumping in, in the puddles. So one more thing we should talk about before we wrap up is it's a little bit more of a technical thing. So we use our vector brush and each of these little lines that I just drew, I could sit here and select them all and pull them away and they're all they're all there. They're all individual. Let me undo, put them all back. So what this means is that this is like a pretty heavy scene. It might be nice to have it editable still at this stage, but as I start filling up this timeline, with a bunch of textured brushes or brush strokes, this can get kind of heavy and playback may not be exactly what we want it to be as well as our file size. Our file size might be a little on the big side. So what we want to do is flatten our drawings to help keep things moving at a decent pace. So we can do that by select, there's a few ways of doing it actually. So we can select our entire drawing, we draw a selection around it or just hit control A to select all. There's an icon up here says flatten for up here in our camera mode or camera view pardon me if I click this guy it just took I'll do it again just to 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 demonstrate but you can see now I can't I can no longer click those those little pieces that were defining her arm over here he she's now been reduced to one piece of artwork it took all of my brush strokes and flattened them down into one image and that will consolidate again on file size and for speed so we can play back if our scene starts getting heavy. Uh, that's one way of doing it. If we are drawing, we can do it as we're drawing, I should say. You can see over here, there's that same exact little icon. It looks almost exactly the same as the one over here in our camera, but it has the addition of a little A in there. That stands for auto. So if we click on auto flatten, I'll just do some brush strokes. So here's our brush stroke. It's at, piece, at one piece like that. If I cross over it, let go, it's together. If I turn auto flatten off, there are two separate piece, two separate elements. So again, that's kind of a preference type thing. It depends on how you feel when you, as you're working, you can either keep that auto flatten on as you work, as you sketch. That might be something you like to do. So it will flatten as you work. But if you were like, whoops, I gotta, these eyes are looking a little low. I wanna move those eyes. Ugh, I can't. I'd have to use my cutter to cut the eyes and move them like that. There's a third place we can go to flatten our drawings. If we go to our select tool, go over to its tool properties. Under operations, you'll see the exact same icon for flatten that we saw earlier on in our camera view. The exact same button is there. So if I make my selection and click on our flatten bu button inside of our select tool properties, it will flatten our object. That about wraps it up for vector texture brushes. I'll see you guys in the next video.